Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I've put together a collection of my favorite tray makeovers. Trays come in all shapes and sizes and they are something that we often find at the thrift store, but sometimes we're not sure what to do with them. So in this video, you're going to find lots of ideas on how you can give them a makeover for your home or for resale. I hope that you enjoy today's video. Our second project is this lovely tray that I've picked up for a few dollars. I've already sprayed it with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer so that my paint will bond. I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint now. I am going to do two coats to get the coverage that I want. I know that some people can get upset when I paint silver trays, but this was so beat up and so worn out. I just really want to give it some new life. I wanted to make this tray a bit more like an artwork, so we're going to frame it out and I'm going to paint the border with Dixie Belle's Vintage Duck Egg Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm using an angled small artist brush and just painting the edges by hand. It doesn't matter if I make a mistake, I can always come in with some more buttercream and top up the area where I've gone over the lines, but I'm also thinking that I'll probably end up distressing the border, so it doesn't matter too much if it's not perfect. I really have a vision for this piece and we are going to be using transfer shortly and I really wanted some blue to tie in with the design that we're going with. For today's project, I'm going to be using IOD's Floral Anthology and Brocante Transfers. I'm starting with the Brocante Transfer and I really wanted to use these little birds here, particularly the ones with the blue on the bird's feathers. But I also wanted some text to go up the top, so I am cutting out some of the text in the rest of the booklet. There is so many designs to pick from in this transfer. It is such a beautiful design. It's definitely one of my favorites. Now I'm going to start positioning my transfers, planning out how I want my design to go. I want the birds to sit in the center and I want some text up the top, but I want to add some florals. So I'm grabbing my floral anthology transfer. I've already used this a lot on other projects, but I'm going to grab this design here and I'm actually going to end up cutting it because I'm going to have bits of the florals just peeking down from the top. And that also means that I get a little bit more from my transfers. I can split this up and I get a bit more use out of them it goes a little bit further so I'm laying it down where I want it and I'm using my fingernail to crease a line so that I can now come in and cut it I want it to sit in that curve so I'm trimming the transfer and then this one I'm also going to have to come in and manipulate that and trim it so that it will fit in the space that I need it to so I'm just repeating the same process, creasing the transfer where I need to cut and then very carefully coming in and trimming off the excess. I'm also mindful of balance and symmetry while I'm doing this. I want the florals to sit in the same section on the opposite side to the ones we've already positioned. So I've got them all trimmed out the way that I want them to go and now I'm going to very carefully peel off the backing and position it where I want it to go and then press down. I'm then going to use my fingernails just to get it started and then I'm using the transfer tool that comes in the pack and I'm going to start burnishing and rubbing and as I'm doing that I'm lifting back the plastic carrier sheet and as you can see these come off really easy. I'm further burnishing it with the carrier sheet that it comes on. Repeating the same step for the other side as well. Now with this one, the transfer did overlap a little bit into my blue border that I've painted, but I'm not worried because I can come in and I can actually paint over the top of that. They are thin enough that it's not going to be obvious if I have to paint over it. I now need to position my text. I've realized that it's going to be easier if I can actually trim up the text so I can position it exactly how I want it. So I'm trimming off the first text to go up the top in the center. I'm going to position it where I want it to go and then very carefully press it down and start rubbing. Now, particularly with letters, you wanna go slow as you're lifting. They can be a little bit fiddly and you wanna make sure that you get them transferred without ripping them. So again, I'm trimming 
pulling apart this text to make it a bit more easy to work with. Don't be afraid to do that. You can turn these transfers into anything that you want. You can make them fit whatever project you have. It really is up to whatever vision that you have. So here you can see I'm burnishing this one. And again, they can be a little bit fiddly. So just take your time with these. If you don't have access to a transfer with lettering, but you want to achieve a similar look, you could always come in with some stamps for this part, or you could use a stencil. The same goes for the florals and the birds. If you don't have these, you could always use decoupage paper or napkins. You definitely don't have to have the exact same products that I'm using today. This is just an example of how I'm using them. I was going to add that other bit of text there too, but decided to add the birds instead. So I'm positioning the birds in the center. I absolutely love these and I've been looking for the right project for them for a while. So I've pressed them down and now I'm going to burnish them with the transfer stick. I'm rubbing all over to start off with. Then I've picked a corner and I'm going to get started. I'm slowly lifting the plastic as I'm rubbing. And if I find that some of the image has not transferred, I simply put it back down and rub. So you definitely want to lift that carrier sheet very slowly so that you don't rip the design. These images are very, very thin and you don't want to accidentally damage them or rip them. So definitely have that patience and take your time while you're doing this. If that larger piece of carrier sheet that you're having to hold is becoming a bit cumbersome, remember you could always pause what you're doing and trim off the excess before you keep going. Next, I'm going to add that bit of text down the bottom. I feel like this really balances the design. So again, positioning it where I want it and then very carefully burnishing the design down. Now that I have all my transfer pieces down, I'm going to use a little bit of that vintage duck egg and just cover over that bit that overlapped. I'm then coming in with a fine grit sandpaper and very gently distressing my images. I like to do this because it gives it more of a vintage feel and makes it look less like I've just stuck a sticker on my project. When you do this, you'll notice that some of the sanding dust is colored. Just take a baby wipe. It's pretty easy to wipe that off. I'm now going around and distressing the edges of the tray as well. You're going to see a little bit of the buttercream underneath and also hints of that silver poking through. To seal my transfers and my paint, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. This is also going to be the base for our next step. I'm now going to be using Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze and I'm applying it more heavily to the outside border so that it will catch all of those details and it will sit in the grooves. I'm then wiping back the excess with a paper towel and I'm also adding some to the center and using a paper towel and a baby wipe to wipe back a lot of the excess. If you've been watching me for a little while, you know I love everything vintage and glazed and grungy. So you could always leave this step out if it's not for you. And here's our finished tray. I love how this turned out. I'm so glad I was finally able to use those beautiful birds on a project. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. My second project today is this silver tray that I've already sprayed with Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer to prep it for paint. And I'm going to come in now with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. The chalk paint makes it a lot easier for my paint to stick to the surface. And I know I'm going to have some people upset that I painted this, but trust me, this was not a collector's item. It was scratched up and it was $2 at the thrift store. We're going to give it new life. I've done two coats of buttercream and now I'm going to use IOD's Melange Paint Inlay. We're going to be cutting out this beautiful floral design here and I'm also going to cut out a little bit of text to use down the bottom. 
Next, I'm going to apply a nice even coat of the Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. When you are using paint inlays, you need to apply them to wet paint. I've already done a lot of videos on this, so for my lovely regular viewers, I hope you're not sick of these yet. I just have so much fun using them. So I'm applying a generous coat here. I want to make sure I've got enough that my paint inlay will have something to grip onto. And then I'm going to grab my paint inlay and press it design side down into my wet paint that grid should be facing up at you. I'm going to very gently add some pressure and smooth out my design. Once the first inlay is down, I'm adding that little bit of text down the bottom. I'm then going to grab my water mister and I'm going to thoroughly mist the inlay. This water is going to help activate the paint and get the whole process going. And then I'm going to grab a damp cloth to apply a little bit more pressure, make sure all of my inlay is making good contact with my paint. I'm just gently dabbing and you can also come in with a brayer for this step. After about 30 minutes, my inlay is dry. It will appear faded when it's ready. I'm going to use my mister to thoroughly dampen the inlay again. This is going to help it to be able to be released. I'm also using a cloth to dab off some of the excess. You wanna give it about 60 seconds before you actually start pulling the inlay away. So I'm going to find a little corner and start very gently removing the inlay. I'm gonna set this off once I've removed it off to the side to dry because I will get another one or two uses out of that. So I'm then going to repeat the same steps for the inlay up the top, finding a little corner and then very gently and slowly pulling the inlay away. If you are new to inlays, the Melange paint inlay that we're using today is a great one to start off with because there's lots of beautiful little images like this for you to get started. When your inlay is dry, it's best to seal it with a spray sealer as brushing on a sealer can cause it to smudge. So I've sealed this up with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze and I'm paying particular attention to the border, wiping off a lot of the excess in the center and allowing it to sit in some of the cracks around the outside so that it adds some age. Finally, I'm going to add a little bit of Dixie Belle's bronze gilding wax around the outside. And here's our finished French country tray. I love how this turned out. I can definitely see it on someone's coffee table or sitting up on a shelf looking beautiful. These inlays are amazing. You really can transform something plain into something beautiful. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our last project is this really solid Australian made tray that I found at the thrift store. It was pretty plain. So after cleaning it, I am going to give it two coats of Dixie Belle's sawmill gravy. I'm going to be painting the entire thing. Now this was not a shiny surface. So again, I'm not worried about the paint adhering. Chalk paint has great adhesion. So I haven't worried about doing any primers. So I'm painting the entire thing, including inside the handles. This paint has really great coverage. You can see this is only the second coat and I really don't think that I need the third. On the inside base of the tray, I decided I wanted to add some decoupage paper. So I'm going to be using the beautiful sheep recycled treasures design here. I really love these two little sheep here and it's perfect. It's in landscape. So I'm just sort of lining it up here, working out if it's going to be the correct size. And I'm very lucky it is, it's going to fit almost perfectly. So I'm just lining it up, working out what I need to do in terms of trimming the paper. And I'm just sort of figuring out how much to cut. So I'm just cutting down the center there, making sure that I've left enough paper and I will save that other design for future use. Next, I'm actually going to position the paper inside the tray and I'm going to make sure that it's going to sit the way that I want it to. And I'm actually going to crease using my fingers and my fingernail where I'm going to need to cut. And whenever I do this, I try and make sure that I do leave just that little bit extra, just in case I haven't measured perfectly. 
if you don't have long enough fingernails to do this, you could definitely maybe use a ruler or something like that. Just make sure you're very gentle when you're doing this. The paper could still rip. Now that I've got my creases where I need them, I'm going to use some scissors to trim off the excess. Again, I am leaving a couple of millimeters on the outside of the line to make sure that I haven't cut it too short. I definitely recommend that you save any of your off cuts, any of your leftover bits of paper because you never know when you might need them. So I'm trimming off the excess on the sides, but I decided that I was going to leave the excess that's down the bottom because I am going to be working the paper into the grooves of the tray and I don't want to come up short down the bottom. Because of the way that the grooves are in the tray, I decided to turn it around and apply the decoupage paper this way because again, I'm going to be working the paper into the grooves. I am applying Dixie Belle's flat clear coat in a strip. This is going to be our anchor strip. It's going to hold the paper down as we work our way down and it's going to make sure that the paper doesn't slip and slide away. And doing it in sections allows you to make sure that you don't get any air bubbles and it does minimize wrinkles you don't want to apply a whole bunch of product and then have your paper down and have air bubbles they're very tricky to get out so once I've got my product down I'm going to carefully lay my paper down and then I'm using a ball of cling wrap to carefully smooth the paper down and you can see I'm sort of lifting it up in places repositioning it you can do that just be gentle so I'm using the cling wrap to carefully smooth the paper down I don't want to risk doing it with just my fingers because I could create friction or my nails could accidentally rip the paper once I've got the first part of the paper down I'm carefully pressing the decoupage paper into the grooves here I'm just using a little squeegee that came with a window decal that I did in the past and I'm very carefully using that to smooth the paper down a little bit as well. Again, you don't necessarily need this. I do tend to use a ball of cling wrap usually when I'm doing this. So again, I'm repeating the process. I'm applying a strip of product. I'm also making sure that I'm getting it into the grooves of the tray. And then I'm very carefully laying my paper down a little bit at a time. If I get any really obvious creases, I do very gently lift the paper up and then reposition and gently push back down. So I'll be repeating these steps each time, just working in sections until I have all of my decoupage paper down. Let me know in the comments if you have tried this beautiful sheep decoupage paper by Roy Cycled Treasures in the comments and let me know what project that you used it on. The method that we're using today is called the wet method where you apply the wet product, smooth the paper down and then add more product on top. You could also do the iron on method. This is where you apply several coats of your product, let it dry and then lay your paper down and then use some baking paper between your decoupage paper and an iron on the cotton setting. This allows the heat to reactivate the top coat which then adheres your decoupage paper and then you would then again apply another coat to seal your paper. That's just another way that you can do it. I'll try and do a video on that in the future. I pick this method because I have a lot more success with it. I would worry that the decoupage medium underneath would not activate in the little gaps, in the little ridges on the tray. So I decided that the wet method was the best approach for today. You can see that I do have a couple of little wrinkles in my paper. I'm not too worried about those. As often as the paper dries, these wrinkles will disappear. 
Once my decoupage was dry, I came in with a craft knife and I'm actually going to very gently trim off the excess paper down the bottom there. So I'm gonna lightly run the knife along the paper and then I'm going to be able to carefully rip the paper back. Once I've removed the excess, I'm going to apply two more coats of Dixie Belle's Flat Clear Coat to seal and protect my piece. I then decided to use some medium grit sandpaper to distress the edges of my tray. And here's our finished tray. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I absolutely love that decoupage paper and I think that this was the perfect project to use it on. Let me know what you think of this little tray in the comments and please hit that like button if you liked today's projects. Our next project is this little tray with these gorgeous little feet. Now I know a lot of you are gonna hate me for painting it, but there was no stamps on the bottom and nobody that comes into my shop looks at silver trays. So today we are going to be adding two coats of Dixie Bell's drop cloth over the entire cleaned piece. And I really just felt like the color brought out the amazing details on this tray. Now, if this wasn't just a decor piece, I definitely would have primed this with some slick stick first. Once my paint was dry, I sprayed on some satin clear coat to seal it for the next step. We are going to be using Dixie Belle's All Natural water-based voodoo gel stain as a glaze, and I'm going to apply it using a synthetic brush, and I'm going to work it into all the details around the edge first, and you can really see how it sits into all of those beautiful, I think that they're berries, I'm not sure, but beautiful curves. It's just a really, really pretty piece, and I feel like the voodoo gel stain there just really highlights that so we're going to put that on and then I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe back in certain areas I'm also applying the Voodoo Gel Stain to the center, and I think this is going to give it a lovely weathered sort of a look. So I'm applying it here, and then when I actually come in to wipe it back, I found that I actually wiped a little bit too much back. So I am going to end up coming back in and just sort of adding a little bit more. And this is really something that you can play with and get to your liking because we have that clear coat down as a barrier. I decided to grab another element from the pots transfer and I am just lining it up and then pressing it down when I'm happy with the placement and then I am rubbing my design down. Now I'm being very, very gentle because my paint has not been on there for super long. It is dry, but it isn't cured yet. So I'm being very, very gentle as I'm rubbing so that I don't rip up any of the paint. I'm then going to use two coats of Dixie Belle's Satin Clear Coat to seal my entire piece. Finally, I'm going to add some gold gilding wax around the edges and on the little feet. And here's our finished tray. I feel like it would look beautiful on a vanity, holding somebody's jewelry, or even propped up against a sideboard, just like a little work of art.
fact is this little tray that I got for $2 at the thrift store. It was in good shape, but again, definitely dated. So I'm giving it a good clean and then I'm going to come in with two coats of Dixie Bell's drop cloth and I am painting on a base coat. I'm not going too heavy to start off with. I just want to get a good foundation coat. I'm also going to be painting the bottom and it's going to probably take another coat to get that full coverage. Next, I'm going to try my hand at stamping with IOD's ink. I have not used the ink before. I've always used paint on a brayer. So we're going to load up an ink pad here. So you want to shake your ink really well. And then you're going to gently squeeze your ink out in a little border there and then get progressively smaller with your rectangles as you go in. And then I'm just running the tip of the ink bottle. I'm not squeezing any additional ink out and I'm just pulling the different lines of ink together to saturate my pad and I'm going to keep doing this until the whole thing has been covered and you can see the ink is being pulled in by the ink pad there and then I will put the lid back on and top it up when needed. So I'm going to be using the farm animals stamp here. I have not used the rabbit before and to get your stamps ready to use you want to use a 220 grit fine sandpaper to gently scuff the surface before you this just makes sure that your ink and paint will stick to the stamp. I like to cut out my stamp so that I can use them on the backing and have a little bit more control. So I'm carefully cutting out the rabbit. Next, I'm grabbing my black ink pad and I'm gently tapping the pad against the back of the rabbit there so that I've got a good coating, putting the lid back on my stamp pad there. And then I'm gently going to turn the rabbit over, put it in position and then press down. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm almost tickling the surface there and then I'm gently pulling it back. Now I'm going to have to make my own mask. Each stamp pack comes with its own mask. I couldn't find mine. So I'm inking up my rabbit and then doing a stamp on some scrap plastic that I had. And then I'm going to carefully cut the shape out. This is just temporary. I'll have to find my mask. I couldn't at the time. So I've just made my own here. I need this for our next step where we're going to be doing some layering with some other stamps. Always remember to clean up your stamps after using them. I'm just using a baby wipe to wipe mine clean. I'm now going to be using some elements from the Queen Bee stamp. This is a beautiful French inspired design here. I am going to first of all lightly scuff the surface with some 220 grit sandpaper because I have never used these before. Remember, this is not something that you have to do every time you're about to use your stamps. You only do this when you first open up your new packet. I'm going to be grabbing the two laurel elements there and I'm going to be placing them either side a little bit behind the rabbit. And then I'm also going to be using the little bow element as well. Now that I know where I want my other stamps to go, I'm going to ink up the little bow first and that is going to go underneath our rabbit in the center. Once I'm happy with my bow, I'm going to grab the mask that I made for the rabbit and I'm going to start positioning my laurels. I did think that perhaps I would need the mask there for the bow, but I realized that it was not going to be needed because I wasn't doing any layering over it. So I'm inking up the first piece of the laurel and then I'm going to carefully position it over the top of the rabbit. Now remember, we've got that mask, that bit of plastic there that's going to stop the ink from messing up our original stamp of the rabbit. So I'm gently pressing down on the stamp there and then I'm carefully pulling it back. I'm going to repeat the same process for the laurel on the other side.
So as you can see, as I'm removing the little mask that the laurels did not wreck our rabbit stamping. I'm then going to use some 220 grit sandpaper to gently scuff our rabbit. I want it to look a little bit older and then I'm wiping the dust off with a cloth. I did want to touch up a few areas near the whiskers. I did not cut out the whiskers properly for our mask. So I'm just touching that up with a little bit more of the drop cloth. I'm then sealing the entire tray with gloss clear coat. We're reaching for that tobacco road again, guys. I hope you're not sick of it. I'm applying it with an artist brush. I'm using a mister to water it down as well. And then I'm also applying it to the side. So the whole thing is going to have that sort of antiqued look, but I have wiped off a lot of it from the center. I don't want that to affect our stamped image. I just love how the stain is sitting in all of the imperfections on the tray. We're going to add some more imperfections. I'm using a little flathead screwdriver to run it along the edges of the tray to give it a weathered, chippy sort of a look. I'm also running the edge of our black ink pad along some of the edges of our tray. I just wanted to bring some of that black ink from the center to the outside. Finally, I'm going to be adding some twine to the handles on the end there. I'm using my hot glue gun. I'm just adding a few little dots of glue along the way and securing my twine in place. So I'm doing that for both sides. I love the rustic feel that twine brings, but you could always add something like a lovely lace ribbon if you wanted to go in a bit of a different direction here. So I thought I was done, but I got a little bit stamp happy and decided that I wanted to add some of my other favorite stamp, which is the crackle stamp. I'm just adding a bit of ink and randomly pressing it. And here's our finished French country tray. I just love how this came together and I'm definitely obsessed with using the ink on the stamps. It's definitely going to be something that I do a lot more of. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Our next project is this little metal tray that I found at the thrift store. It's nothing special. It's actually pressed metal, I believe. I've already sprayed this with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer, and now I'm going to give it two coats of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm going to paint the entire top of the tray, and that will be enough coverage for what we're wanting to achieve today. I may have a few people that are angry that I painted this, but please don't be. This was a made in China piece. It was not an heirloom. And honestly, we're going to give it new life today. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to cut out this design from IOD's Brocant Transfer. It's a beautiful rose design. I'm just seeing how it's going to fit in the tray. And then I'm trimming off some text that's going to go with it as well. I like to break my transfers down into sections to make it a little bit easier. I'm also going to trim off some of the excess space around the outside of the design so it's easier to work the transfer into the tray. I'll then remove the backing carefully from my transfer, hover it over the position where I want it to go, and then carefully press down. I have my transfer stick and I'm working the transfer onto my surface, rubbing down, especially focusing first on the areas that go up on the curve edge of the tray. So I'm making sure that those are down. I'm then doing a bit of a rub over the entire transfer, and then I will pick a corner, lift that plastic up, and start rubbing as I go. I'm pulling that plastic up as I rub to make sure that the transfer has released. If I come across an area that has not released properly, I'll put it back down and I will continue to rub that design down. These are very easy to use and it's a very easy way to add something special to your home decor projects. Once I have the design rubbed down, I'm going to take a piece of the carrier sheet and burnish the design further, making sure that it's all stuck down properly. I'm then going to trim off some of the text so that I can arrange it the way I want and repeat the same process, rubbing the design down. With text, I definitely recommend that you take your time as it has lots of little parts and you don't want to accidentally miss a section. 
To give this more of a vintage feel, I took some 220 grit sandpaper and I lightly distressed the transfer. I'm only doing this a little bit. I just want to give it a little bit of a vintage feel. I'm then wiping off the excess dust and then I'm going to seal the entire tray with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear. I'll then buff that with a microfiber cloth. To frame this out, I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Brown and I'm working it into the border of the tray. I'm particularly paying attention to the area on the handles. I really love that rose and the swirls that are there, but I'm gonna work my way around the entire tray, adding that brown wax and then wiping it back. I feel like this creates a lovely frame to really highlight the beauty of that design in the center. I also grabbed my wax brush and rubbed a little bit of excess wax onto the interior to create a bit more of a border and then I buffed off the excess. And here's our finished tray. I'm really happy with how this turned out. That transfer is absolutely stunning and I feel like this could be used as an artwork, hanging on a wall, leaning on a shelf, as well as a functional piece on a coffee table. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. I found this wooden tray at the thrift store for $5 and thought it would be perfect for a paint inlay project. But first I needed to clean it well with Dixie Belle's White Lightning. It's a deglosser and a degreaser. I'm going to then rinse off my cleaner and then we're ready to begin. I started to paint this tray with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint, but as I was going along, I noticed that I had some bleed through. So I decided that I had to switch colors. However, I'm going for a French country look here. So I wanted to stick pretty close to this color and Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint is pretty close to Buttercream. So I finished off this first coat so that I would have an even base layer. And then I grabbed my Dixie Belle Silk Mineral Paint. It has a built-in sealer and a built-in stain blocker so it's going to make sure that those tannins do not come through I ended up doing three coats of this because it was a very dark tray now if you come across bleed through you've already started and you don't want to change paints you could go over the top of it with Dixie Belle's clear boss that is also a stain blocker and it also comes in white and gray now I'm also adding several coats of endless shore to the bottom of the tray as well for today's projects, we're going to be using IOD's new paint inlay, Melange. Now this is eight pages of beautiful French style designs. There is lots of little projects as well. This is perfect if you've never tried paint inlays because there are a lot of designs that you can play with. Remember, you get two to three uses out of each of these. I've already done a few projects using these, so make sure you check out my other videos. For the tray, I selected this larger design, but before I get started, I'm going to trim around the outside closer to the design to make this a bit easier to work with. Next, I'm going to apply an even coat of Dixie Belle's Silk Mineral Paint to the entire surface of the tray. I need it to be thick enough so that the paint inlay has something to actually transfer into and so that the paint doesn't dry too quick. You must apply a paint inlay to wet product. So I'm working pretty quickly here. I need to make sure this doesn't dry too quick, but I also need it to be even. Now that I'm ready, I'm going to carefully press the paint inlay design side down into my wet paint. You should see the grid facing up at you. And I'm going to very gently start pressing the inlay into my wet paint. So you don't wanna press so hard that you start moving the paint underneath, but you do need good contact. So I'm using a combination of my fingers and a brayer to do this. Now this tray has little gaps in between the bits of wood so I am going to very gently press the inlay into those so that there's not such a big gap between. I'm then going to use my water mister to wet the surface well and then I'm going to come in with a damp cloth to also apply a little bit more pressure. Once I'm finished doing this, I'm going to set this off to dry for about half an hour. It is a hot day, so I shouldn't have to wait too long. 
When your paint inlay is ready, it will be dry to the touch and it will look faded again. So now I'm coming in with my mister and I am thoroughly wetting it again. I'll then come in with a damp cloth to sponge off the excess and I give it about 60 seconds before I start pulling. Then I carefully grab a corner and I'm going to slowly start to pull the inlay away. I'm paying attention to make sure that I'm not going to accidentally rip this as I'm pulling it off because I will get another use, maybe two out of this and I wanna make sure it comes off intact. As I'm pulling this away, I am just blown away by the beautiful details in this design. I think this is just stunning. I'm going to put this off somewhere flat to dry. Once this was dry, I came in with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Spray Sealer and then I was able to come in with my Gloss Clear Coat once that was dry and I was able to seal the design without it smearing. I'm also sealing the rest of the tray too. Once my sealer was dry, I came in with some medium grit sandpaper and did some distressing around the edges. I decided I wanted to give this a bit more of a vintage feel, so I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze and I'm applying it to the entire tray. However, I am wiping off a little bit more around the center so that the lettering is a bit more obvious, giving it a bit of a halo effect. And then I am applying the glaze to the rest of the tray as well. If this look isn't for you, remember you could just leave this step out. And here's our finished tray. I'm really happy with how this tray turned out. I think that that inlay design is just stunning and I love that I will be able to use that again. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this tray that was originally from Ikea. I have already primed it with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm going to be doing a similar process to the first project. I'm dabbing and stippling on that cotton chalk mineral paint. Stippling on the paint means no brush strokes. So I'm going to be painting the entire tray and it's going to take two and a half coats to get the coverage that I want. Next, I'm going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Iron Patina Paint. This is going to give us a rustic look. I'm going to stir it really well to get all those metal particles stirred together. And then I'm using a small artist brush to go around anywhere that I want that rusty sort of a look to appear. I'm particularly focusing on the rim of the tray. I'm also going to be adding it to the handles and other areas. I'm going for a rustic, but also sort of enamel look here. So we just wanna take something that's new and we wanna give it some character and age. If you are participating in the giveaway, my code word is RUSTIC. I've got it on the top of the screen. Write it down somewhere safe so that if Brandy from the DIY Struggle emails you, you have that code word ready. Write it down, don't put it in the comments. Now that you have the code word, let's get back to it. I'm going to be giving this tray one coat and then letting that coat dry completely. Then I'll be coming back in with the second coat so we can move on to the activation step. So I'm applying the second coat of the iron patina paint. I've sped it up for you guys so it's not too repetitive. And then once this is done, I'm going to get a new brush. You don't wanna mix up your brushes. And I'm going to organize my green patina spray. I'm going to pour it out into a separate container, just approximately how much I think I'll need. I've got my paintbrush and I'm dipping it into the green spray and I'm applying it to the wet iron patina paint. Now it's called a green spray because it does come with a nozzle but you don't have to use the nozzle. When I'm working on a project like this where I have a very specific area that I want to have the rustic look I tend to use the paintbrush. It just gives me a lot more control. I'm going to add a little bit more of the green activation spray just around where I think rust would naturally occur. And then the next day, this is what we're left with, some rusty, crusty goodness. Now, I'm not gonna leave it like this. I'm now gonna come in with some more of my cotton chalk mineral paint. I have a chip brush. I'm dabbing and stippling it in certain areas. I just want to tone it down just a little, not a huge amount, just a little bit so that it looks a bit more blended in like it's happened naturally. 
not like I've just painted on a product. So I'm going to go around and just add a little bit more of that paint. I just find that it really gives it a bit more of a realistic look when I add this step. I want to add some text to the center. So I'm using an element from JRV Stencils, the mini advertising labels. I have some of Dixie Belle's Umbar Silk Mineral Paint on a little artist brush. I'm dabbing off the excess and then I'm going in and I am swirling and dabbing to get my stencil looking crisp. These stencils are beautiful to work with and I definitely recommend offload most of your paint. That is the best way to avoid any smearing or bleeding under your stencil. Once my paint is dry, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress the stencil so that it looks a little bit more rustic and ties in better with the look that we're going for. After cleaning off my sanding dust, I'm going to seal the entire tray with some of Dixie Belle's Clear Best Dang Wax. I'm then going to use a microfiber cloth to buff off the excess. And here's our finished rustic tray. I love how this turned out. I think that that patina paint makes it look authentically aged and the JRV stencil just adds that little bit of something extra. Let me know what you think of this in the comments project is this leaf shaped platter and we're going to prime it first with Rust-Oleum's clear matte sealer and then I'm coming in with three coats of Dixie Belle's buttercream chalk mineral paint. On slick surfaces I usually use Dixie Belle's bonding primer slick stick but for smaller decor items I've just been using Rust-Oleum's clear matte sealer as my primer as I find it works perfectly well. I would however recommend that you use slick stick on any furniture pieces or anything that's going to get a lot of hardware before you start painting. Next I'm going to be using IOD's lemon drop transfer and I've got to work out what lemons are going to be suitable on this dish. I don't want anything too big because the scale will just look a bit odd so I do want something a little bit smaller. So I did pick this set of three lemons here and I do actually end up cutting out another two little lemons but in the end I decided that it was just a little bit too crowded to add that as well. Once I've worked out where I want my lemons to be positioned on the dish, I am going to carefully peel the backing off. And when I start to lay it down, I did realize that I should probably have something between the lemons that I haven't quite got to yet uh, so that they don't accidentally start adhering and my image doesn't get cracked and warped because this is a sort of odd shaped project. So you can see I'm starting on the side there and I'm just burnishing and pressing down and I actually had to trim some of the transfer as well to make it move just a little bit better. So this is definitely a bit of an odd shape that the transfer is going into. So if you're doing something like this, definitely take your time, work in sections and you'll find it a lot easier for the transfer to go on. I did end up having a little gap in two spots where the transfer slipped a little bit, but I'm not too worried here because I am actually going to be going in very shortly and I'm actually going to be sanding these and giving it a bit more of a weathered look anyway. So it didn't really wreck the vision that I had. So I'm sanding it here and I noticed as I was rubbing that some of the pigment from the transfer actually started coming off into my paint, but that was pretty easy to fix. I just got a paper towel to wipe off the dust and a wet wipe to wipe off some of the pigment. Next, I'm going to be sealing the dish with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. That's going to seal in the transfer and protect my platter. I'm then going to use IOD's Antiquities Stamp. And we're going to grab one of the text designs that also has some scroll detail around the edges. I just thought that it went really nicely with the lemons for a bit of a French country look. So I'm going to be using IOD ink on my stamp for this. You could also use paint as well. It really is up to you. 
I have taken the stamp off the backing just because this is a bit of a curved surface so I'm going to have to manipulate it a little bit. So I've inked up the stamp, cleaned my hands so that I don't get any ink on my platter and then I'm going to carefully hover over the position that I want it to go in and then very carefully press it down. Once it's down you are committed. Just make sure that you have one hand always holding the stamp in place and still so that you don't actually shift and smudge your design. So I'm just lightly pressing over the stamp just to make sure that I have good contact with the details and then I will pull it away when I think it's ready. And here's our finished lemon platter. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I've been wanting to use this transfer for quite some time and it's actually now a retired design. So if you like it, make sure you run out and grab it so that you don't miss out. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project today is this wooden tray. After cleaning, I'm going to give the tray three coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. I'm using this paint because it has a built-in stain blocker and also a built-in sealer, so it does save a lot of extra steps. It's going to take that many coats because this is a darker colored piece and obviously light colors do tend to need more coats for full coverage. I'm not too worried by the center though because we are actually going to be doing some decoupage so this is going to be a lovely bright background for that paper but I don't need it to be perfect so my focus really is going to be on getting even coverage on the outside of the tray. In the center, I'm going to be using JRV's Poulette Poulette decoupage paper. I apologize if I said that wrong. And I'm going to have to trim it to size. Obviously, this is quite a large paper design. So I'm just working out here what I want to keep. So just positioning it and then using my fingernails to help crease and mark out where I'm going to have to trim. This tray has indents, so I already know that this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Obviously, whenever we are decoupaging over anything that's not just a simple flat surface, we are definitely creating a challenge for ourselves. But I was determined to use this paper. I've wanted to use it for quite some time ever since I started stocking it. So I thought I was just going to go with it and embrace the wrinkles and the creases. Now I have my paper ready, I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I'm laying down a strip of product and then smoothing my paper down with a ball of cling wrap. This helps reduce friction. So you can see that indent there and I am having to work it a little bit into that. So again, we are embracing the wrinkles in this. I'm not going to get it perfect, but in a lot of ways, this will just add to the vintage charm of this piece. So I'm also using some water in my mister bottle to lightly miss the paper here and there. This helps the paper to expand and stretch without tearing. So you just want to be very careful when you're doing this though. So you can see I'm working my way across, laying the product down and then pressing my paper down and smoothing it out. I still have a bit of a gap between the indents. So I'm using a craft knife to very carefully cut the paper after this is dry. And then I'm using my paintbrush to work product in. This is just to make sure that that paper is completely stuck down and we don't have any air bubbles. I'm repeating the same process for each of those indents. I'm also going to use my craft knife to trim off any excess paper around the edges. I'm then sealing the entire decoupage sheet with that same Dixie Belle flat clear coat. To keep everything even, I'm also applying the same flat clear coat to the rest of the tray. You guys know I love a rustic feel, so I'm now coming in with some 80 grit sandpaper, a little bit coarser this time, and I'm using that to distress the edges of my tray. 
I'm also then going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's Clear Best Stang Wax. This is going to be a base for our next step. I want to antique this even more, so I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's Brown Best Stang Wax, and I'm really going to work it into those indents and creases. This is going to help hide some of those cuts that I had to make, and it also helps hide uh, the creases in the paper as well. So this is a little tip for you that it can help disguise those. And again, we are embracing the wrinkles. We are embracing the weathered nature of this. I think it just adds to the charm. I'm also adding that same brown wax to the rest of the tray and wiping off the excess. If a rustic look isn't for you, you could always leave this part out. You could go in a different direction and you could use a gray wax. This is just going to be something that you will do to your liking and to whatever look you're trying to achieve. And here's our finished tray. I love how this turned out. I know it's not perfect, but I've accepted the wrinkles. It's probably a good life lesson in there too. And I think that this is a really charming piece. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this little wooden tray that I picked up for $2. After cleaning the tray, I'm using two coats of Dixie Belle's Sunkissed Silk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely cream that has quite a lot of yellow tone in it. It's going to take two coats to get the full coverage on this. And one of the other reasons that I used the silk is that I don't know what kinds of oils and things have been used on this tray. So I would rather have the built-in stain blocker to stop any stains coming up through my paint. I'm also going to give the bottom of this tray several coats as well. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's La Campagne stamp. This has so many beautiful French country designs, but we're going to use the larger seated cow. So I'm using the IOD black permanent ink on my ink pad. I've just lightly inked it up. I've kept it on the backing for this part, and then I'm going to very carefully position it in the center and press down. You always wanna have one hand holding the stamp in place while you use the other hand to make sure you have good contact. The lovely texture of the tray gave this a beautiful vintage feel. Now I'm going to be using an element from the Queen Bee stamp. We just want some text from that stamp. So I've taken the design that I want, I'm inking it up, but then I'm going to be using a wet wipe to carefully wipe away the parts of the stamp that I don't want. I just want the text. So I'm just using a wet wipe to wipe off the excess. You could also use some masking tape to tape off the areas that you don't want to use as well. Now that I only have ink on the text that I want to stamp, I'm ready to go. So just like before, I'm going to carefully position it where I want it to go and then press down. Next, I'm going to lightly distress the edges of the tray again to add to that vintage feel. And then I will seal just the ink because remember the silk has a built-in top coat. I'll seal the ink with some easy peasy spray wax. And here's our finished tray. I love how this tray turned out. Those stamps are absolutely beautiful to work with. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. Our, our first project is this simple white tray. I thought that it had a lot of potential and would be perfect for a decoupage project. But first, after cleaning, I'm going to give it a freshen up. I'm going to give it two coats of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely cream color. It's definitely one of my favorites to use. So I'm going to paint the entire tray in this color. You can find a full product list in the description of this video below, and you can find all those paint and products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au.
Next, I'm going to be using recycled flower sack blocks. I'm specifically wanting to use the design with the blue grain sack stripe. I feel like it goes beautifully with this cream tone. So I'm going to cut the paper in half and save the other side for another project. Once I have the design that I want, I'm going to position it in the center of the tray. Now there is going to be a bit of a gap either side of the paper, but I don't think that matters too much. It'll just sort of look like a border. So here I'm just positioning it. And once I've worked out how much I need to trim off, I'm going to carefully trim that off with scissors and we can get started. Today, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's flat clear coat as my decoupage medium. When I decoupage, I always start at one end and I lay an anchor strip. So you can see I've pulled back the paper and now I'm applying some of the Dixie Belle flat clear coat down. I'm just doing a strip of product. I find if I lay it down in sections, I get less air bubbles. So I'm just using my fingers to gently press it down. And then I'm going to use a ball of cling wrap. This helps reduce friction. It minimizes the risk that you're going to rip your paper. So you can see I'm just smoothing it down, making sure there's no air bubbles. And then I'm going to repeat the process. So lifting my paper up, laying down a strip of product, and then laying the paper down over the top and very carefully smoothing that down with the cling wrap. This is called the wet method. I've definitely had the most success with this method. However, there is also the iron on method where you lay down at least two to three coats of your clear coat, letting each of those coats dry and then laying your decoupage paper on top and then adding some baking paper down and then ironing on a cotton setting, no steam. A lot of people have had success with this. I have done videos in the past showing this method but I just like the wet method the most because I know I'm not going to get any air bubbles. So you can see I'm just repeating the same steps each time, laying down a strip of product, then very carefully laying my paper down and using the cling wrap to smooth that paper down and obviously make sure that there's no air bubbles. So this is just definitely a bit repetitive, but I thought it was just helpful for you guys to see the process. This is an easy project really because it's all flat. So it's definitely a good one to start off with if you haven't done decoupage before. So now I've got it all smooth down, I'm going to come in with another coat of that flat clear coat and I'm going to go over the top of my decoupage paper. And once this has dried, I'm going to come in again with another coat because this is a serving tray and I'm going to seal the rest of the tray with the same clear coat. Once my clear coat is completely dry, I'm happy with the tray, but I think that I want to add something extra on the edges. So I'm going to be using IOD's new adornment stamp. So you can see here, I've taken it out of the packaging and I'm holding it up against my tray, just trying to work out what design would work best. Now I'm going to be scuff sanding my new stamps. You only ever need to do this once and I'm just using a 220 grit sandpaper for this. It does help your ink stick a bit better. Now that I'm ready to stamp, I'm going to select the design that's up the top. I think it goes perfectly with my decoupage paper. I am pulling that off the stamp and then I'm going to put it on a smaller piece of plastic to help me do my stamping. You can also use a thin mount for this. So now I'm using some of IOD's permanent black ink. I've turned the tray over and I'm going to carefully position it where I want the stamp to go and then press down. You wanna make sure that you always have one hand holding the stamp in place while the other hand applies pressure. And then when you're done, you lift the stamp straight up. These designs are designed to work together and be a continuing pattern so you can make beautiful borders really easily. This is just such a beautiful stamp to have.
I've stamped both sides and now I need to do the ends. This was a little bit tricky to film, so I have turned it on a bit of a different angle here. You can see I'm lining it up along the bottom and then very carefully pressing down. And I'm just gonna repeat the same process as I go along the tray. Obviously some of the design will be missing where the gaps for the handles are, but I still just feel like adding this border around the tray really finished it off nicely. Next, I decided that I would use a baby wipe to wipe back some of the ink to give it a bit more of a faded, aged look. Now, my paint is already sealed, so when I did this, I was able to wipe it and ensure that I didn't get smearing, but just be careful if you're going to do this and test it out in a certain area first. I am then coming in with my black ink pad and I'm just hitting the edges of the tray for a distressed look. And here's a look at our finished tray. I'm really happy with how this turned out. That paper is absolutely beautiful and that stamp goes perfectly with it. Let me know in the comments what you think of this project. Our next project is this little tray. I thought it was lovely to start off with, but I just didn't like the lettering in the center. I wanted something a bit more neutral. So I'm going to paint the entire tray with two coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. Silk Mineral Paint has a built-in stain blocker, so it's going to help block out the lettering that was originally on the tray and any tannins that wanna peek through on that wood. Silk Mineral Paint also has a built-in sealer, so I will not have to go over this with any sort of sealer or wax once I'm done. I actually ended up adding a light third coat on the center and now I'm speeding up the drying process to get a little bit of the cracked paint effect. This is what happens when you speed up drying on a paint that has a built-in top coat. I'm now going to be using the cow from the farm animals stamp and I'm just going to position the cow in the center to start off with and I'm using IOD's permanent black ink to ink up my stamp and then I'm going to very carefully position it in the center and once I have it where I want it I'm going to press down. I'm using one hand to hold it in place at all times while the other hand moves around the stamp applying pressure to make sure we have a good transfer of the image. I wanted to add some text under the cow and I thought that the pure thick cream design from the crockery stamp collection would be perfect. So I'm gonna just take that top design there and I'm going to ink up just the top part of the stamp. And I'm then going to be using a baby wipe to very carefully wipe off any of the areas where I don't want the image to transfer. So anywhere that I've got the ink, except for the text that I want to use, I am wiping that off with a baby wipe. To get the stamp in the exact position I want it to go in, I've taken it off the backing. I'm positioning it just under the cowl and then I'm going to very carefully press down on the text that I want to transfer. I'm then going to be using the chipped paint design on the top left there of the Vintage Textures stamp. I'm inking that up and I'm going to be putting that randomly on the tray. I'm not going to press the entire design down. You'll see that I just sort of press in certain areas uh, just to get a bit more of a random effect. There are four slightly different styles in the chippy paint design from the Vintage Textures stamp. So I'm just taking a couple of them and randomly adding them to the tray. I'm adding them to the sides. I'm gonna add it all over the tray 
but obviously I'm just sort of lightly pressing here and there. I'm not inking up every time and I am going to do one of my favorite things shortly and that's use a baby wipe to actually wipe back some of the intensity of the ink. You'll see that it definitely adds to a bit more of an authentic look to do that because it's not as contrasting and it sort of actually ties in with the areas that I didn't go as heavy with my paint over the original gray tray and now I'm just grabbing my ink pad and lightly going around the edges to add a bit of that darkness again just to give it that distressed look something to keep in mind is that you cannot necessarily wipe back all inks. I can only speak to the success that I've had using IOD ink and I have been able to wipe back this ink without any smearing. So I don't know what other inks are like. They may smear. So I definitely suggest that if you want to give this a go that you try it out first on perhaps some scrap cardboard or some, some surface that you can paint and seal and then do this on. The paint has to be sealed in order for you to be able to wipe it back, otherwise the ink soaks in too fast. To age this up even further, I'm going to water down some of Dixie Belle's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm applying it over the top of my Silk Mineral Paint and I am wiping it back. I also use a mister in certain areas to get even more of the product back. I want it to lightly tone the paint and I want more of it sitting in the corners and crevices of the tray to make it look like it's worn over time and that's just where the dirt or whatever has accumulated over time. You could definitely leave this step out if this look wasn't for you. You could use a paint wash instead or you could even do some sort of a brown wax as well. So I'm going to be applying the stain to the entire thing uh, including the bottom as well. I'm then going to almost dry brush the edges and a little bit more in the corners. I'm not adding any extra real product left. I don't have much left anyway, and that's just going to darken up those areas. To finish this off, I want to add some twine to the handle. So I'm applying some hot glue underneath the handle for my twine to initially be attached to. And then I'm going to be wrapping the twine around the handle. I did start off in this larger sort of ball of twine, but ended up cutting off a smaller length. And I'm going to apply glue along the handle here and there just to make sure that it's secured properly. I just love the rustic feel that adding twine to a project brings, but if this look isn't for you, you could always leave this step out. This was a little bit of a time consuming part of the project, so I have sped up the rest of this process for you guys. And here's our finished tray. I love how this turned out. It's definitely now more my style. I never tire of using the amazing IOD stamps. It just gives everything the most authentically aged, beautiful look. And I hope that it's shown you that you can just use bits and pieces of stamps to get the look that you're after. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed this video collection and you can find the products used in this video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share this out to a friend that you think might enjoy it.